Um, so as I said in the chat, I didn't uh, get as prepared for this as I intended to get. Um, I haven't had a chance to like play with the code and really dive deep into this, but I've at least read the uh, most of the chapter at this point, and I put together a few kind of talking points. That's as far as I've gotten. Um, I, I do think like, <laughs> I want to spend a lot more time on this chapter. Like this is most of what I do. <laughs> and so this is definitely like a very important chapter. Um, and, uh, so I guess without further ado, we can dive into it and all through this, this is definitely a discussion because I don't have a presentation. So, and if you have any thoughts to, uh, butt in with, please do so. All right. So the general idea that we're going through in this chapter is mostly binary classification. Um, they talk a little bit about, um, how to extend things to, uh, more than two classes or how to how you can often just split a problem up into a bunch of binary classifications, which is basically what um, what tree models are doing effectively. Um, so the general approach being that you like establish some sort of cutoff probability that puts things into one class or the other, and then you're predicting a probability that it is in that class um with some model um and if it's above you know if it's above the cutoff you put it into the upper class or the second class whatever um and then they present a few models and kind of the general idea of some models of how to how to generate those probabilities all right any any thoughts on the general approach on any any of that pretty relatively straightforward. All right. Um, so the first model they go into is naive Bayes. And I, I found it interesting. Like I had to go look uh, in the index of the book. I was like, have they talked about Bayes before? The, it, it's been briefly mentioned, um, Bayes theorem. And it's kind of important, I feel like, to understand what the heck is going on here, um, that they just kind of wave their hands and I mean, I don't know, maybe they're expecting people are familiar with Bayes, but it feels weird to expect that. So I wanted to pull that up. That um, Bayes theorem is the probability, you can predict the, or you can calculate the prob probability of A given B if you know the probability of B given A and the probability of A and the probability of B. And that is very important to understand that this is, you know, this is a thing. This is an equation that has is separately worked out. And that's what all of this naive base is based on, that you're trying to figure out the probability that some event will occur um, given a bunch of Bs. And you do that by how often does that B appear when, you know, let's put this in specific uh, terms. So the probability of um, we're doing binary prediction classification. So let's say the probability of true given some variable. And you just look at how often is that variable true given that the other, that the thing you're trying to predict is true. And then you look at the class or percentage of each class. Um, I, I like naive Bayes in that once you kind of get the idea, it's like, oh, I can see how, like I could calculate that on paper, <laughs> you know, like that's a pretty straightforward, I can understand why that would be a popular technique because um, it's really straightforward how to how to do that. Um, it's obviously it's very limited, at least in the way it's presented in the book. They talk about that you can do it with numerical predictors. Um, but then one of the ways they say to do it is to turn the numerical predictors into categorical, which is it can be really ugly. Um, and or, you know, and then they say, or there are other techniques effectively. They don't like really go into how to do that. Um, so that's naive base. Any any thoughts yeah, on so, naive base? Yeah. So I just had a question in that case, like if you would uh, um, turn the numeric variables into categorical, would you be like binning them? Yes, that's okay. what, what I took it as at least. Okay. And I mean, all I know is um, like I have seen 
uh, memes on Twitter about how bad that is. So uh, I was that's, just about to ask if, like anybody's done that and or seen that in the wild before. And like, like oh, that's work. I've certainly been tempted to do it um, because it does simplify. You know, if you can just say, you know, oh, this number means that it's in this, you know, this category of things. But having the numeric value, like if you're high in one bin, it's arbitrary that you're not placed into the second bin. You know, mm -hmm. so it it's I can understand why it would be seen as bad. But then again, if it's all you can do, it's all you can do. Right. Then again, again, it's not all you can do. We have other techniques. <laughs> so I most often see that with ages. Yeah, yeah. Spinning, spinning in age groups. <laughs> yes, being uh forty six this year, I am very familiar with spinning in age groups because I just got a lot older um, this year because now I'm 46 to 55. Um, yes. <laughs> so like bidding, you can bin. Like sometimes that's the, again, the most straightforward thing to do, or even in like in data collection, like binning in age groups, it's just easier to, um, to have those bins rather than having people select an exact age. Um, I mean, even, even when you select your age in years, that's you're binning yourself. That's if true. We, we rarely say, like yep. I am like 40 years and, and three weeks old. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually it's kind of funny. I my birthday's in January, so I think of like most of the year I'm saying the correct number, at least the you know, the floor <laughs> like I have turned to that age and in this year and the math is right. But uh yeah, that is definitely that's true. We are binning um whenever you turn something into an integer, you're kind of binning if it is a continuous variable or, you know, uh, uh, double. Um, I was wondering if you wanted to talk about why naive Bayes is naive. Yeah. Um, I, I, I skimmed it briefly. I don't know if I could state it succinctly. If you can give it a try, that would be great because I like I read that, but I didn't absorb it. So my understanding is, if you could switch to the base theorem tab a minute, so I have something to look at. Oh yes. So the you know if you have more than one predictor, so it's not just a single B, right? Like if you just have one predictor and one outcome, then I think that naive. Bayes is like as mathematically rigorous as you can get because you're just talking about two things that are related to each other. But if you have multiple predictors, then what naive Bayes does, I think, is it, it takes that piece, the probability of B given A, and that's actually a whole lot of Bs. So like there's B1, B2, B3, B4. Right. And then the naive part is it says, oh, let's assume all the Bs are independent. And so then the probability of B given A is probability of B1 given A times probability of B2 given A, and it just becomes a product of those, which is calculable or esti estimable, at least given your data. And then just says, okay, well, let's multiply these together and that'll be the thing. But that's right. naive because it's usually not the case that all these things are independent. I think that's what they, the book said. Yes, yes. Because it's um, the other way to, another way to say the same thing is basically if you have multiple predictors, um, you're basically making a single class for each combination of predictors would be exact Bayes. That, you know, um, what was the example that they gave? That, you know, they right, had right, right, a right, male right. Hispanic, or a Hispanic man with high income from the Midwest who voted in the last election, did not vote in the election before that, has three daughters and one son, and is divorced. Like, that's not that many variables, but the chances of two people fitting that category are relatively low and especially chances low. Of lots of people <laughs> fitting that exact category so that you can get an actual distribution and you know percent chance of that happening um so right that's what it was is that that's what exact bays would be is that um like all the bins are or not all the bins but all the combinations of bins are represented in your sample and that's not the case in reality most of the time um, yeah, that's a good thing to, to point out. Um, just because why is it called that? Like, really, it's kind of 
like Bayes classification. Like you wouldn't in the real world, I can't think of many cases where you would do exact Bayes, you know? <laughs> so all right. The next one, um, I was very happy that he pointed out why I was like, what? This isn't LDA. What what is my brain doing here? Oh right. It's uh Leighton uh or Leighton Dirichlet uh analysis is the other LDA. But here we're talking about linear discriminant analysis. Um which is based on like the oldest uh, statistical classification, which they have the footnote talking about, unfortunately, was, you know, there's this whole eugenics background in stats. And um, so it's kind of good to skip over the actual origin of this. Uh, and we talk about um, predicting a, um, you know, predicting a categorical variable. And here we can use normally distributed um, data or categorical predictors. And um, it's you're basically looking at the um, like the the variance within a given group compared to the variance um, across groups between groups. Um, uh, so that'd be that's the covariance matrix. Um, beyond that, this is something that you can do with the mass package. I don't know. I don't have a lot of thoughts on this one. Uh, did anyone have anything that they particularly found confusing or took away from this one? It didn't really register very. <laughs> like I was trying to, I was trying to visualize what was going on here a little bit. Like, and I feel like this is an example of a case. You know, you think you have a two-dimensional two predictor variables and some categorical variable. This is a way of drawing a line between those, right? Like right. that's what it is. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't like, didn't really get it. Like what was, I don't know. Like, I, the description yeah. wasn't do it for me. I feel like the authors should do like a partnership with StatQuest if anybody's watched those videos. I just like had YouTube up while I was reading this because uh -huh. I had the same thing. I had a lot of trouble like visualizing this, but he does a really great job of, I think explaining oh. the concept and um, yeah, and like showing the dis two distributions of your continuous predictors and then um, comparing like the variance between versus the variance within and maximizing the former. Was that stat quest or stats? Yeah. Stat quest. So S T A T okay. with uh, Josh, I think it's uh, Starmer. But yeah, he's got a video for um basically everything uh pca naive bays um pretty much everything that's done in this book plus more that's that's definitely good to know yeah um, he was a professor at unc it was a lot of like genetics -y stuff but now i think he actually does that full time i think he's probably okay. left this his academic job but yeah, I, I mean, the, I guess the the visual visualization on this was a thing that I don't, you know, obviously I don't have that in my notes yet. It would be helpful to be looking at the, you know, two class, and you're just basically putting it in a line and trying to um, say this combination of variables means this class. This combination of variables means this other class. That general idea, like those images, without an explanation of what those images are or mean are used to describe a lot of classification algorithms. And so it feels like LDA is kind of like the baseline version of making those images. Um, so that's probably useful <laughs> to understand. Uh, like, you know, uh, neural networks tend to be described using those same types of images, just the, the images can be much more complex. <laughs> I, I do have one more question. So like, I'm not a mathematician, but as, as like data science practitioners, like how much of the underlying mathematics do you like, if you were asked to write like a, I don't know, a, a LDA algorithm, like, could you do it? Or do you just understand like the nuts and bolts of what's happening under the hood and you use it to do your job? Yeah, I could do it. I'd say, okay, so 
library mass and then i've done it no um <laughs> so no i could not i couldn't write one um maybe maybe given resources to look up i could make it work but i don't i don't know i don't think that, that's part of why i wanted to do this club is to have a better understanding of some of the underpinnings um because i don't you know, yeah no <laughs> and even even in cases where like i might be able to do something from scratch i wouldn't like i'd make make sure that i didn't forget anything <laughs> by, by looking it up like i yeah. i have no qualms whatever looking up what i need like, right <laughs> But yeah, we don't do um, we don't do brand new things, I guess. <laughs> is, so I've never had to do anything like we, you know, we might like Jonathan's doing a lot of programming in Torch right now, and so it's kind of new things. But it's not; it's you know, it's applying things that people have done, but it's also kind of already there. So, um, yeah. I don't know. Anyone else done any like programming of these algorithms from? I mean, it's it's like beyond base because mass is effectively part of base R. So this one in particular, <laughs> there's no reason to to program. All right, and then the the final technique is logistic regression. Um, this whole section was super useful for me to read through because I use this terminology a lot, but putting it all into one place was nice. Um, it, I feel like uh, this is going to help Jonathan and I communicate better with another member of our team who uses some of this terminology, and I didn't realize exactly what he meant sometimes. So, um, but we, yeah, we work with uh, logits and log gods uh, a lot in the last uh, several months because we've been working with um, item response theory for uh, question item analysis. And uh, it is a a version of logistic regression effectively. So uh, I found it really helpful to, to go through this chapter. And the general idea here is that, um, you know, probabilities are on a zero to one scale Linear regression is effectively, you know, can be any number, negative infinity to infinity. And so logistic regression is all about converting a zero to one scale to a negative infinity to infinity scale and back. Um, everything else, I mean, I, there's a lot of details on how the math works beyond that, but that's basically what it is. Um, yeah, there's a, this is the longest section, I think. Um, and oh, I guess the, you know, the important part is that in order to fit it, um, you have to use maximum likelihood estimation because um, well, I don't have a good because on this. Uh, there's no closed form solution, but I actually, I don't have it in my head why there is no closed form solution. So, uh, did you work through the math on this, Jonathan, and really? I did not get internalize to this it. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds surprising, at least for a a low dimensional case that it wouldn't be some sort of closed form on this. I don't know, but like I said, I did not get to that part. Sorry. Yeah. And like that's funny actually because they explicitly point out here. Fortunately, most practitioners don't need to concern themselves with the details of the fitting algorithm since this is handled by the software. So, like they kind of answer your question, Stan. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't I don't have the why here, and this is um something I would like to dive in more. Uh in the next session probably because I want to go through and really understand this model a lot better. Um, but basically the idea, like once you get past all of the, all of the wrapping around it, it is basically linear regression, which we went into before. It's just, it's a, um, with a transformation on it. 
Um, trying to think. I'm looking at these key ideas to see if I if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about. Um, you you fit it with an iter iterative process and then map back to probability. Uh, and it's fast. All right. Anything else? Any other thoughts about th that's as far as I've read. I have not read the rest of the chapter yet, so I can't really discuss the rest. Um, but yeah, any any other thoughts? Anything you particularly? I guess um, I can take requests <laughs> on the uh, what you would like to see in the presentation. If there's anything you particularly didn't grok or really would like to see worked out, I am happy to do that for next week. Otherwise, that's all I got. Um, it's like, it is a really good chapter. I'm not sad to be taking more than one week on it. I'm sad that I didn't get more ready for today. Because uh, I, I think even if I were ready, I would have wanted to probably do another week. Um, so I, I will take this. I'll, I'll continue next week. And then after that, we only have two chapters left. Now, they are, again, fairly... Um, fairly meaty chapters, but does anyone want to like claim them uh, before uh, before anyone else steps up and claims them? If so, you know, either speak up here or let me know in the chat, and we'll get you on the list. Um, it's uh, sorry, it's statistical machine learning is chapter six. That's like tree models, k nearest neighbors, uh, bagging and random forest, and boosting, and then. Section seven is unsupervised learning, uh, PCA, k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, model-based clustering, scaling, and categorical variables. Um, those might be coverable in one week each. I don't know how deep he goes into them, or they go into them, rather. It's 50 pages and 40 pages-ish, so. Um, in any case, we are we are approaching the end of the book. I think it'll only be a few more weeks, um, which is exciting. I, this has been uh, good. Like uh, there was some discussion in when I missed last week that, like, I, I do really appreciate how they cover things. How they, um, like, it is just enough stats. <laughs> it's like practical stats, just like it says. So. All right, if that's it, if no one has anything else, we can go ahead and adjourn and we will meet again next week. All right, thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oops. Thank you.